We're going to be basing our recipes today on Stephen Reichlin's Project Smoke book. Specifically two different recipes. The double whiskey smoked turkey. That's what we're going to smoke our one of our breasts in. So we'll brine it with this recipe. And then our thighs and our wings. We're going to use the turkey ham recipe. We'll take a second breast and we'll use a dry rub. And that's just going to be the, the Traeger rub that you can buy from the store. We'll use it. Let's get cooking. Hi, today I'm going to show you how versatile a turkey is. We are going to break this thing down and make a couple different things out of it. I'm going to cut it right there at the joint. Okay, we've got wings and drumsticks. That's gonna be our ham turkey, turkey ham, whatever it says on there. And then we have our breasts. One will be a dry rub and one will be a brine. Then we have our carcass. There's still some meat on here that I think I can probably utilize to grind for turkey burger. And then what's left of the carcass, we will make stock out of. We're gonna do our dry rub on the one breast using Traeger rub. And this says it's good for anything. So we're gonna try it on turkey today. Other side of the breast, we're going to do the double whiskey smoked turkey. So, this obviously is a recipe for a whole turkey, but we're going to cut everything down enough to not make it too strong. So, we're going to start with some cloves, and with cloves, a little bit goes a very long ways. So it calls for four whole cloves for this recipe. I'm just gonna barely put any in there. And we've got salt. You can never have enough salt. Just gonna throw some salt in there. And 
maple syrup. Again, calls for a half a cup. And then we got a cup of whiskey. We're just gonna put a splash. Pepper. Yeah, this one calls for a medium sized onion peeled and quartered, but we're just gonna substitute with a little bit of onion powder just because we're only dealing with a small piece of meat here. I don't think it's gonna make a lot of difference. Okay, then we're just gonna round everything out by pouring water over the top. We're going to cover the top of this with water and then we will put this along with all of our other stuff in the fridge for the night and we'll let it, we'll let it brine, we'll let it marinate. Okay, we got the water in there. We'll just go ahead and put the top on this. We'll put it in the fridge for the night. And then we're gonna add three quarters of a cup of salt. Wow, that's a lot of salt. But turkey is, Pretty plain tasting, so. We're gonna add three quarters of a cup light brown sugar, which I happen to have, so we're gonna use the right thing. And it says packed. One tablespoon pink curing salt. This says five whole cloves. I don't really like cloves that much. We're just gonna put some cloves in there. Allspice berries. Don't have any, don't like them anyways. So not gonna put that in there either. Two bay leaves broken into pieces, whoops. That makes them fun to get out later, doesn't it? Two cinnamon sticks. Says three inches each broken into pieces. He likes breaking stuff into pieces, apparently. <clears throat> Dirty sucker. Okay. Then I don't have any peppercorns, so we're gonna throw some black pepper in there. Whoop! It'll be all right. We like pepper around here. I'm just gonna whisk this up a little bit, and then we will turn this on high, it says. It says to bring to a boil over high heat and then let it cool to room temperature. So I think you can probably imagine what this is gonna look like. Okay, we've brought it to a boil. We're gonna go ahead and turn it off. Okay, we've added two quarts of cold water in here with plenty of ice. We have the mixture that just came off the hot stove. We brought it to a boil and now we're gonna pour that in. Okay, we have a little over four quarts. Okay, the recipe says to let the mixture cool to room temperature, then refrigerate until thoroughly chilled. So that's kind of one of the reasons why we put ice in there. And we do have a little bit more meat than what they called for because we do have, instead of two drumsticks, um, we have drumsticks and wings. That feels cool enough. It's it's not warm at all. Okay, we have the brightness temperature we want. 
We're gonna go ahead and put our meat in there. We've got our legs. We've got our wings. Okay, now we're gonna refrigerate this and it says to brine this for 48 hours. Okay, we'll put this in the fridge and we'll let it brine. Okay, now for our stock, we have celery, carrots, and onions. We're just gonna take carcass, neck, all of that stuff. And we're gonna shove it in there. I'm gonna wash my hands real quick. Okay, we're gonna add pepper. We'll just throw it down there in the bottom. This is pink Himalayan salt. You can use regular table salt. And then a gallon of water. Okay, we're making a stock, so I'm gonna bring this to a light boil. So I'll put it on medium for now. Once it starts boiling, we'll turn it down to low and we'll just let it cook down. Okay, the broth is done. It took a while to get it done, but we just let it cook down for a few hours. And we're just gonna strain out everything from the broth. It sat there and cooked and simmered for uh, about three and a half hours. So we'll get everything pulled out of here and get back with you here in a minute. Okay, once you get everything strained out, this is a little bit bigger strainer. We're gonna strain it back with this and get some of the bigger or the smaller stuff out. I rinsed out the bowl and I rinsed out the strainer. Now we're gonna strain it back into this again. Okay, we're gonna pour this into our jars. Trying to get an even amount in both of them. So that is what you can do with your turkey carcass. You can make delicious turkey stock. Okay, here we have our two breasts side by side. We're gonna do the one that we rubbed with the Traeger rub. Boom. And we're gonna do the one with the Whiskey brine. Boom. Okay, we're gonna follow the Traeger priming procedures. Whoops, losing some meat down there already. There we go. We're gonna follow the priming procedure. Once we start to see smoke, we'll go ahead and 
shut the lid and then we are going to set our smoker to 275. Okay, we got it primed. It's looking good. We're going to go ahead and close the grill. And we're going to adjust the knob at 275. Let's go get our meat probe. Okay, we've got our meat probe here. This is the Oregon Scientific. Um, it's fairly old. I don't think they even make this one anymore, but I've had it for years and I really like it. So you turn your sensor portion on that has your meat probe attached to it. And then this is the transmitter. So you want to turn this on. This is the receiver rather. So I can have two different styles of modes. This one will show me what type of animal it is. Um, and this particular time this would be turkey and it says turkey should be well done so it's giving me a temperature of 180 which I can't adjust so instead of that I'm gonna turn the mode over to, um, to where I can choose what temperature it is and I should be able to okay hold that button so I don't want it at 180 I want this at 165. I want it to tell me that it's going to be done at 165 because um, I'm going to be slicing some of this into lunch meat. So we'll go ahead and put our probe in and I can carry this thing around with me all around the house and do other stuff and it'll it'll notify me what's going on. Just poke it in there. That'll tell me the temperature of the meat, and we'll just keep an eye on it. What I like about this thing is it will tell you when it's almost done, and it will also tell you when it is done. It's nearly done. So it tells you at five degrees before the temperature, but then it tells you a million times after that. So it does get obnoxious. But if you don't happen to be near it, it's nearly done. It will, uh, it, it looks like it's about every 10 seconds. So one more degree to go here. It's done. That's what it tells you when it's done. It's done. Okay, let's get this thing off of the grill. A big difference between the dry rub coloring, which is this one, and the brine coloring, which is this one. This one looks a lot more golden brown. Okay, there's the dry rub, the Traeger rub right there. And that is the whiskey um, brine. Really good coloring on them. They came off the grill, they're still very moist. And we are going to let these sit and rest and when they rest to room temperature we will put them in the fridge so that we can get them firmed up to slice for lunch meat okay here is the traeger rubbed turkey let's see how it slices <laughs> We kind of got a full tray here. Look at that. That is nice. Thin slices of meat. And uh, I already did try it, but let's try it again. For being a dry rub, it really did penetrate the meat really well. Let's, uh, we'll put this on a plate and then we'll continue to slice this until we get the rest of that sliced up. Okay. There is our Traeger rubbed turkey. Very good. Still a lot of moisture in that meat. That's going to make a great sandwich. Okay. Let's try this whiskey, whiskey brine. Oh, that looks good. Let's do it. Go ahead and 
and cut this in half because I think it'll be easier to run through the slicer like that. Yeah, I like that better. Well, we might as well try this. Hmm. That's also got a really good flavor. It's, hmm. I can't decide which one I like better. They're both really, really good. If I do say so myself. If anything, the Traeger rub seems like maybe it's a little bit moister than this is, but I mean, look at that. There's still, there's a lot of moisture in that meat for for such a small hunk of meat. And that's why we took it off at 165 so that it would retain some of that moisture so that when we do make a sandwich out of it, it will make a better sandwich. All right, let's uh, unload this onto a plate. And you're slicing her up. Okay, there you have it. Two really nice looking plates of sliced meat. Be great for sandwiches later on down the road. Got our Traeger preheated to 225. We're gonna put our drumsticks with the thighs attached and our wings. Make sure when you put something like this on the grill, it's a lot better if you can spread that wing out. It'll cook a lot better if it's not all balled up. Okay, we will come back when this reaches temperature. Let's check it out. cut some meat off the bone here on these wings so that is pretty pink looking but the reason for that is because of the curing salt so don't be alarmed go with the temperature that you get these wings were on there for three hours. And that meat looks good, very juicy. Very good flavor. That's a good recipe for a wing. I will say that. So we'll wait till the, till the drumstick and the thigh get up to temperature and we'll pull those off. And I have no doubt that that will taste just as good as this does. Okay, here is everything that we got off that one turkey. We have our broth. These are half gallon mason jars or ball jars, whatever you want to say. Half gallon jars with plenty of headspace so that they can go in the freezer and they don't bust. 
Then we have our two breasts. One is made with the Traeger dry rub. This one is brined with the double whiskey brine that it shows in his book. Then we have our drumsticks with the thighs attached and the wings that we made with the turkey ham with the curing salt. So in terms of time management, you're going to need to obviously get your turkey. It will probably come frozen. You will need at least, uh, you will need at least 10 hours with your turkey sitting in cold water to defrost it. Then you'll break it down so you have all the different parts. The first thing that you'll actually be able to complete is your stock. And that should take you about eh, four hours or so for all that to uh, render, not render, but yeah, render. For that to render down into your stock. And then your breasts. That is going to be 24 hours for this brine. And I would suggest you just do this the same amount of time so that both of these can go on the smoker at the same time. And then you're going to pull these off at 165. That's going to be your internal temperature on these two breasts. Then if you're going to slice it, let it cool off in your refrigerator to where you can actually slice it and there's not juice running all over the place. Lastly is this turkey ham. You're going to need about two hours for the brine to make that, to let it cool down, and then to be able to put your meat in there. Then 48 hours it needs to sit in the brine. And after that, it's about, it took about three and a half hours on my smoker. Yours may be different. They're loosely based on that. Some of the stuff I didn't have or I don't care for those ingredients. And some of the stuff, obviously the proportions are different because the, the amount of meat is different. So this is just another way to do your turkey dinner. If you're looking for ways to make it for a smaller family, or if you just absolutely don't want to do a whole turkey, this is a good alternative. You're going to have lunch, you're going to have leftovers anyways. So, um, I don't know why you wouldn't start with these two. I mean, those are the driest, it's the driest meat there is, the breast meat. So if you can cook it separately, get your temperature right, slice it, or don't, you don't have to have a slicer. You can just cook it separately. You can do this, you could even do it in an oven if you wanted to. And then you can have that for your sandwiches, uh, for your lunches, and hey, um, I hope you like the video. I appreciate you watching and have a happy and safe Thanksgiving. Mmm. Yeah.